Does your slice backhand float or sit up too much? This is the most common problem I see with club level players on the slice backhand, and it really turns your slice into a weakness because opponents can easily attack this kind of a shot. Instead, you want to hit a slice backhand that stays low, skids through the court, and has real bite on it. And if you can do that, your slice can become a real weapon, especially at the club level, because your opponents hate to get low to a really good slice backhand. Now, I've taken a close look at a lot of slice backhands of club level players over the last couple of weeks, and I've identified nine deadly slice mistakes, and any one of these nine mistakes will result in your slice backhand floating or sitting up too much. In today's video, I want to discuss one of the most common slice mistakes that results in your slice backhands floating, but first let's quickly talk about what actually makes the ball float or sit up. The biggest problem here is the racket face being too open at contact. If the racket face is like this at contact, really open, and you're slicing too much under the ball, the ball is going to float. And instead, you actually want your racket face to be relatively flat, uh, open only just a few degrees, maybe 10 degrees, something like this. But let's take a look at that in super slow motion. On the left you see the slice backhand with the racket face just a few degrees open and on the right you see the slice backhand with the racket face too open. The shot on the right floats and the one on the left stays low and skids through the court. But let's take a look at this closer up. The most important aspect is of course what happens at contact. On the left you can now see that at contact the racket face is just a few degrees open and on the right the racket face is a lot more open and in fact way too open. We can also see that on the right I'm slicing under the ball a lot more and uh, that is of course not what we want to do. On the left I am contacting more the back of the ball and just a little bit under the ball. So why do most players have the racket face too open at contact on the slice backhand? First we need to take a quick look at your grip. A common problem is too much of a forehand grip and that results in the racket face being too open. Now I won't go into too much detail here, but what I do recommend is a grip with the index knuckle on bevel number two that's often called a continental grip, and with that grip you will be in a good natural position for the slice backhand. So try to be on a continental grip and make sure you avoid too much of a forehand grip. Right here my index knuckle is on bevel number three, that's an eastern forehand grip. With that grip it's pretty much impossible to hit a good slice backhand. So the deadly slice mistake that we want to talk about today is trying to slice under the ball too much. And that looks something like this. Now, first you need to make sure that you have a good grip for the slice backhand, but then uh, players will still often slice too much under the ball because they have this false idea in their head that this way they can put the most amount of underspin on the shot and that will make the shot effective. That's not what we want to do. If I really open up the racket face like this and hit a slice backhand, the shot will just sit up and float like this. Now sometimes you may see players like Federer open up the racket face like this in order to hit a drop shot that then kind of bounces backwards, okay? But not for the slice backhand. What we want is we want the racket face to be relatively flat against the ball, just a few degrees open, and we want the ball to uh, stay low and really go through the court. And that's the goal that we have with the slice backhand, and the racket face cannot be too open to do that. So let me try to demonstrate that here. Okay, so that was pretty good. Let me do one more. And something like that. This, this shot stays low, it skids through the court, it has bite on it, and that way you can really hurt your opponents. So the goal is to get the racket face uh, just a few degrees open at contact and to not slice under the ball too much. How can you work on that? Well, first you need to understand what you're trying to do. So let's take a look at the contact position here. Now, my arm is fully straight. Um, I have a good grip here and the racket face is just a few degrees open and that's the contact position that we're trying to get on the slice backhand. The swing does go down a bit to contact, but we're not opening up the racket face too much, just a few degrees, so this is the contact position. The way to work on this is, of course, to start with shadow swings. We always start with shadow swings. So you can do your unit turn, and now you just swing to contact, and you stop at contact, and you try to get this position right. So as you can see, 
arm is fully straight, um, the wrist is in this uh, sort of cock position, the knuckles are up a bit, and then I have the uh, correct position of the racket face here just a few degrees open. And then I go back again to the end of the unit turn, I swing down a bit to contact and stop at contact to get this position correct. Most of you will uh, mo most likely have the racket face too open. Okay, so you practice that over and over. It's also good to keep the left hand back here, keep you in this position. You practice over and over to contact, and uh, once that feels right, you can then incorporate it into a full swing, full sa shadow swing here, excuse me. So full shadow swing right here, and then we just continue to move through. Now the idea that you should have in your mind is that you wanna bring the racket face against the ball relatively flat. Most of you will have it too open, so then it always makes sense to kind of exaggerate the correction and try to get it relatively flat. So do your shadow swings, and now in the next step, you start to drop hit some shots. So I can practice by myself without a practice partner. I can drop the ball like this with my left hand. I need to drop it a little bit in front and to the side where uh, I want the contact point to be, and then I can practice this shot by myself. So let me demo that. I can drop it here and then practice just like that by myself. And once again, while I do that, I focus on getting the racket face relatively flat against the ball on contact. Let me do one more. Okay, so you can practice a lot like that until you get a good feeling and uh, always take a look at the result. Does the ball stay relatively low? Does it skid through the court or does it sit up? If it sits up, most likely your racket face is still too open at contact. Once you've practiced with drop hitting, you can then start to hit some balls and incorporate this into your play. So much for the first video on developing a great slice backhand. We took a look at one of the most common deadly slice mistakes and that is slicing under the ball too much, which results in your slice backhands floating up. So it's critical that you avoid that. Now in the next couple of days, you'll receive another video, and in that video, we'll take a look at another deadly slice mistake, and that has to do with the swing path on your slice backhand. The swing path is also critical to make sure that you have a slice backhand that stays low and skids through the court, so make sure you check your inbox for that video.